All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. The title of this webinar is The Role of Genomic Testing in Clinical Oncology. My name is Atri Shaha, and I'll be the moderator of this webinar today. Uh, let's, let me introduce the organization on Companion to begin with. So Companion Foundation is an India government registered nonprofit organization based out in Calcutta. It is a digital NGO, which majorly focuses on bringing a peer support social networking site dedicated exclusively for cancer patients, their family members, friends, and caregivers. So basically it is beyond my scope today to talk more about our organization, but my very dear friend and colleague, and also the president of this organization, Mr. Devashish Chaudhuri, is going to give you a brief overview about the organization towards the end of the session. Mm, so this is the first webinar in the webinar series to be hosted by On Companion Foundation. And the goal of this webinar series is basically to, mm, sorry, I just want to mute. Uh, so the goal of this webinar series uh, is basically to spread awareness related to cancer by disseminating the scientific, medical, and other relevant information. September is announced as an awareness month for childhood cancer, blood cancer, and gynecological cancer. So in the spirit of this recognition, we decided to begin our webinar series in the month of September. Now I would like to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Shushanta Roy Chaudhary. So Dr. Roy Chaudhary is uh, the Chief Scientific Advisor of On Companion Foundation. He is currently working as a Chief of Basic Research, Saroj Gupta Cancer Center and Research Institute, which is very popularly known as Thakur Bukur Cancer Hospital in Calcutta. He's also a veteran scientist and who has been elected as a president of Indian Association of Cancer Research in 2016. He has also been awarded the very prestigious J.C. Bose National Fellowship by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India in 2017. So as a background, Dr. Roy Chaudhary has earned his PhD degree in biochemistry back in 1985 from Calcutta University, and he remained associated with the very renowned CSR institutions in Calcutta, Indian Institute of Chemical Biology, as a scientist and principal investigator for 24 years, and supervised, uh, very successfully supervised, 24 PhD students during his tenure. As a cancer geneticist, he contributed significantly on the molecular understanding of human cancer and published more than 150 research papers and other articles in peer-reviewed journals. So you can say it's quite incredible. Well, my association with Dr. Roy Chaudhary is rather old. I know him for I know him for the last 15 years, and I work very closely with his laboratory and PhD students, and I have many fond memories too in my own PhD days. And our association continued through various scientific engagements afterwards. Before I go into the uh, next round of introduction and uh, the housekeeping matters, can I please request you all to keep your microphones on mute? Thank you. So before I hand the session over to Dr. Roy Chaudhary, I have a few housekeeping items to cover about this presentation. So first of all, today's webinar will be recorded and the recorded version will be available in our website. In our website. So that's first. Secondly, and the very, very important thing is that we would like to hear from you during the session. So if you have a question to the speaker, please hit the chat icon in the bottom right corner of your screen. So a chat box will appear once you hit the button and you can type in your questions there. So um, I will, in the interest of time, I'll basically not interrupt our speaker during his presentation, but rather what I'll do is that I'll pick up a few relevant questions in the end of the seminar for the QA session, which is towards the end of his talk. And having said that, I would like to ensure that the rest of the questions won't get lost. So I'll take all of them to Dr. Roy Chaudhary and make sure to follow up with you directly via email. So whenever you're typing your question, please make sure that you type your email ID and names there so that I can follow up. And uh, lastly, I would like to encourage you all to share today's recorded version through your social networks and please feel free to forward it to someone who you think will get benefited. 
So without any further ado, I would like to kick this meeting off by handing this session over to Dr. Shushanta Roy Chaudhary. Welcome, sir. And over to you. Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. I, I thank uh, Dr. Shaha uh, for his for our nice introduction. Today, uh, I'll be discussing genomic, various genomic tests available for the better management of cancer. I have deliberately made this presentation very simple for the general audience. Next slide. Yes. Cancer is a disease of uncontrolled cell growth in any part of the body. It is generally a lifestyle disease. As you can see in this slide, various external and internal agents can cause this disease. There is a less appreciated factor which can also cause the disease is the heredity, which I will discuss at the end of my talk. Next one. Can you go please, uh, R3? Uh, go back. I, okay, I think you're controlling the screen. Okay, yeah, sure. Is it this yeah, slide? You okay, you the uh, previous one. Okay, yeah, this one? Yeah, okay, so next the slide. Sure. Uh, cancer uh, is not a single disease. Actually, there are 200 different types of cancers are, are known. As you can see in this slide, there are five different types of Family, uh, female breast cancers that we know today. And for each of these different types of breast cancer, the causal factor is different and treatment procedures are different. The next one. Cancer starts with a genetic defect in a single cell of our body. These genetic defects are called mutations. These mutant cancer cells grows faster than the normal cells and forms a mass of cells of irregular architecture. At this stage, we do not feel the presence of this mass of cells. As a result, they remain unnoticed. If we can detect these cells at this early stage, it, is, it would be possible to remove them completely and get cured. Please go back. However, since these cells grow silently, after some time, they interfere with the function of the organ and they cause, they may or may not cause some symptoms. At this stage, we, if we may or may, may not detect this tumor mark, it will be possible to have a better survival probability. One of the most notorious property of the cancer cell is that after some time, they lose free from their original site and come into the blood. These free floating cancer cells in the blood in turn can lodge into another organ where they can grow ferociously as a secondary tumor. And these tumors are known as metastatic tumors and this process is known as metastasis these metastatic tumors are very difficult to treat. Can I have the next one? It is well established that these developmental stages in the cancer cells are caused by sequential mutations of a large number of genes which controls these processes in a normal cell. These cancer-causing genes can be broadly classified into two groups, proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. The function of the proto-oncogenes can be best compared 
with the accelerator of a moving car. So also the function of the tumor suppressor gene can be compared based with the brake of a moving car. When after mutation of the proto-oncogene to oncogene, this accelerator gets jammed and cells grow uncontrollably to form the cancer. Similarly, if the tumor suppressor genes get inactivated by mutation, the brake fails and cell grows faster to form the tumor. Next one. Now I discuss some aspects of the cancer management with this background. As you can see, there are four different stages of cancer management. The cancer prevention, which is the most, most uh, important one, the next is the best is the early detection. And then if not possible, then we have to go for various shifted treatment options to treat these malignant tumors. And then we need to follow them whether these tumor or the cancer is uh, responding to the treatment. Today, there are three basic type of cancer treatment, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Since the diagnostic, uh, genomic diagnostic tests are more relevant with respect to the chemotherapy, I will restrict my discussion with the application of genetic tests in chemotherapy treatment options. Traditionally, we use various toxic agents to kill the cancer cells, which are very cytotoxic. However, as a result of this, these toxic chemicals also kills the normal cells. So this treatment causes huge side effects. In some cancers, there is a hormonal imbalance where agonists against these hormonal hormones or the receptors can be used to treat these cancers. In the last two decades, there is a major advancement in the treatment of cancer where we identify various mutations in various oncogenes and then design molecules against those mutated oncogene products so that they can target them specifically and since these mutations are present in the cancer cells only they will not touch the normal cells so there will be very less side effect there are again two class of such targeted molecules they are either either the small molecules or they are large protein antibodies. Since the role of this genetic testing is much more important with respect to the targeting molecules, I will give you a couple of examples to show that how the genetic testing is enabling us to, uh, to, uh, to uh, make the uh, treatment more specific towards a specific cancer. Next slide one. Let us take the example of a leukemia. There are two types of leukemia, the chronic myeloid leukemia and acute lymphoid leukemia. In these leukemias, a part of one chromosome, nine, moved to another chromosome, 22, resulted in a new chromosome called Philadelphia chromosome. In this chromosome, the BCR and ABL gene from these two, uh, two chromosomes join together and forms a new fusion gene which is absent in the normal cells. Using very simple molecular techniques, one can detect this fusion gene and can, uh, and can diagnose whether the leukemia uh, is a chronic my uh, myeloid leukemia or an acute lymphoid leukemia. Now, since these fused genes gives a product which, is, which drives the cancer cells in these, in these leukemic cells, in the next slide, a specific small molecule called imatinib micellate has been designed which specifically blocks the function of the bcr able gene product as a result of which this bcr able protein cannot function cannot give any, any growth, growth signal to the cell, so leukemic cell fail to divide and they die. This drug has been a very successful of the targeted uh, uh, therapy regime and 
patients who are treated with this drug are living more than decades uh, uh, in, in, the, in their life. Now I take the second example, next slide, where I show you the importance of testing of various genes in determining the mutation uh, uh, treatment procedure. This is a lung cancer uh, tumor where mutations in the EGFR, ALK, ROS, KRAS, and MET is involved in the tumor development. Now, uh, a given tumor, if it, is, it has an EGFR mutation, then this patient can be treated with a drug called arlotinib or afatinib. If the tumor doesn't have the EGF mutation, then but have the mutation in the ALK gene, then this patient can be treated with the tizotinib, drug tizotinib. Now, in both the cases, if these patients have a mutation in the RAS gene, then none of this treatment works. So in the RAS mutation background, none of this EGF-based uh, treatment drug will work. So as you can see, by determining the mutational status in the five different genes, we can one hand determine what kind of treatment can be given, and other hand, we can determine whether a treatment, a patient will, be res uh, will respond to the treatment. In the next slide, so I summarize that we can use a simple single gene testing to determine whether a, uh, the, uh, to determine the specific disease type as well as the treatment regime. In other cases, we can test a number of gene mutations through which we can decide what kind of treatment should be given and how this patient will respond. In the next slide, I discuss another options, another way how the genomic testing is helping in the cancer management. Here I'm discussing the disease monitoring. As you can see, in this study, a base cancer patients were followed for 20 years and subsequently divided into two groups, those who have developed metastasis within five years and those who have not developed metastasis within five years. The genomic material from these two groups of patients were compared and a 70 gene signature were developed which can predict precisely whether a patient will develop metastasis within five years or not. So using this commercially available genetic test, MAMAPRINT, it is, it is possible to monitor the breast cancer patient whether what is the risk of the patient to develop metastasis. In the next slide, I discuss another very recent development in the area of genetic testing of in cancer where the genetic material in the blood is tested for a specific mutations. Generally, we do the mutation testing in the biopsy material of the tumor tissue. But it may not be always possible to get the biopsy material. The advantage of these two techniques is that you can test the same genetic mutations in the blood and can monitor the disease progression. And another very exciting application that is uh, predicting to, be, uh, to have in future is the early detection where we, even when tumor has not given any symptoms, maybe this mutated uh, DNA will be available in the blood and can be detected. Of course, this is now in the research phase. We are hoping that uh, uh, this, uh, shortly we will able to use this technique to, this, uh, to detect the cancer at a very early stage. With this uh, discussion, I will now move uh, to my final uh, discussion where I will discuss the next line. I will discuss the hereditary component of the cancer. It has been observed that in some cancer types, there are the occurrence of multiple cancer incidents in a family. It is believed that in those families, 
probably if uh, some mutations in some genes are uh, being inherited to the affected individual. As you can see, in case of breast and ovarian cancer, there are about 10% of the breast cancers are of heredity in nature. By analyzing these patients, several genes have been identified and mutations have been detected. And it has been observed that some of these genes and their mutation puts the individual at a very high risk of developing breast cancer, while others gives a moderate risk or no risk. Among these two several genes which gives risk of developing breast cancers, two genes, the BRCA1, BRCA1 and BRCA2 are very important. It has been observed that individual carrying these BRCA mutations has a about 50% risk, high risk of developing breast cancer by the age of 50. And that uh, risk increases up to 80% by the age of 70% compared to the general population without BRCA mutations. These individuals also are very susceptible to develop the ovarian cancer. So it is clear that some in, in this breast cancer, the mutation in the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene can predispose an individual to development of the breast cancer. But the question is, next slide. Sorry to interrupt, sir. You have five, five more minutes. Okay, thank you. I, I, you, can, I, you can see that it is needs to be decided who should be tested for the BRCA mutations. Because in this case, not this, just mere presence of BRCA mutations can give the cancer. There are several criteria that needs to be met before a person can be tested for the BRCA mutations. And also, it is very important that they should go undergo some genetic counseling so that they can understand what is the meaning of the test, res test results. As you can see in the next slide, there, are, there is a guideline from National Comprehensive Cancer Network which gives a step-by-step -step protocol to who will be tested for the BRCA mutations and how the tested results will follow up if they are negative or positive for, uh, in the future course of treatment and uh, surveillance. So in, in my final section, I summarize that as you can see, based on various genetic architecture, the cancer patients can be stratified into different groups and those patients based on this their genetic architecture they can be given a specific drug which will be more suitable for that drug uh, for that patient which is called the personalized cancer therapy and more appropriately as a precision oncology as in the new slide as you can see that we are entering into the era of physician oncology where not only the matching the patients to the therapy, but also it needs to be de uh, determined who should be avoided where therapy will not work. Biology is very complex. We are still uh, learning a lot. And I uh, hope that we will have more understanding of these processes and we'll be able to develop more such diagnostic states which precisely uh, tailored a particular treatment for a given patient. With this, I end here and I will be happy to take further questions. Thank you very much, sir. That was really good and engaging presentation. Uh, uh, I mean, considering the really uh, short time, you do have to deliver the talk on this very complex topic. Let me try to see if we have gotten any question from here. Uh, not that I can see at this moment. So in absence of any question from our participants, maybe I can ask you something which I gathered from your presentation. Sure. So, yeah. So basically you spoke about the personalized medicine uh, that if I simplify that in a very simple term, that is the finding of a matching drug with reference to one uh, specific uh, mutation, uh, specific genetic variant in patient's tumor tissue. So would you like to basically share your thoughts regarding where we stand as a country, as a nation, and of course, 
Calcutta as a city in terms of giving this genetic diagnosis for personalized treatment? I mean, yes. how many hospital clinics, reference labs, yeah, and I mean, companies? Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, there are several companies now in India who are offering this kind of uh, genetic testing for various ca cancers, you know, various tumors. And also in Calcutta, uh, the two hospitals, like our hospital, mm -hmm. as well as the Tata Medical Center, mm -hmm. offers in-house uh, capability to do these testings in their own uh, diagnostic laboratory. So gradually, these in India, they are getting more informed and they are accessing to this kind of genetic testing to tailor the specific treatment regime for a specific patient. Okay, so let's say for example, you spoke about BCR able mutation forming the Philadelphia chromosome, which is an age old example we also studied in our genetic book. And then we got to know is that there is a specific targeted treatment available against this particular mutation, which is imatinib. And, uh, so, and that is also been here for a very, very long time and tried and tested on various populations. So are we actually prescribing those kind of drugs, which has been tried and tested for many times are we actually just prescribing those drugs in its in its own form and also in its generic form yes actually uh, uh, in our hospital and in um, i think in almost all uh, cancer hospital now uh, this is a routine uh, test that are, are done uh, to see whether a cml patient uh, a a uh, uh, projected cml or all patient has this uh, Mm -hmm. These uh, mutations or not, and based on that, they are given this uh, imatinib drug. Now, let me tell you. Actually, uh, this uh, one problem with in India is that many of these uh, targeted drugs are very costly. Yeah. Uh, many of our patients cannot afford it. Yeah. But in this case, particularly, mm -hmm. uh, government has made a uh, made a, a you know a provision where the economically economically weak patients can get this uh, drug free of cost throughout their uh, throughout their life so uh, this is this is a great advancement and uh, i have uh, you know experienced many such patients who are taking this uh, this medicine for ages and they are very uh, very good in uh, in their in their health and uh, pursuing a very active life Oh, that's great. Actually, this is really encouraging and good example that uh, we are advancing as a nation and we basically are uh, progressing towards actually democratizing this personalized therapy, even in our country. That's really encouraging to see. I get to see a question from a participant whose name is Pinky and who is asking that her mom is suffering from cancer. So is it necessary for me to get the checkup for genetic testing? I think it's very generic question, Pinky. We need to know more about what kind of cancer and everything. So I'm going to follow up with you personally on this and going to pass the question directly to Dr. Roy Chaudhary, but that's offline. Okay, so with this, I think I should call the Q&A session and end. And uh, I would like to give it over to my dear friend, who is also the president of this organization, Mr. Devashish Chaudhary, to, to say a few words, give a brief overview about the organization, about what we do and what we are planning to do. So Devashish, please take over. Thank you, Atri, and uh, thank you, sir, for, uh, for, a, for such an engaging session. And uh, I would like to thank, uh, on behalf of uh, On Companion Foundation, uh, your all uh, your time to prepare for it, and also uh, making this a such a successful evening today. And also my heartfelt thanks to all the participants uh, who could make it today uh, to this uh, to this event and uh, making it such a su successful event for all of us here. I would like to take a couple of minutes uh, to give a little bit of a brief of where we are in terms of uh, advancement that we have made uh, since the time we started uh, this uh, On Companion Foundation. So uh, it's almost a year now and uh, we have reached a status where we are having a well uh, mobile app available. 
So if you can uh, see in the, as I'm presenting here, we already have a companion social app, which allows uh, cancer patients and families uh, to do peer to peer support by sharing experiences. And we continue to share advancements in scientific uh, developments around cancer. And today we heard from Dr. Choudhury, Rao Choudhury, about a drug which was uh, available free to the cancer patients. And these are informations you really get uh, from our forum. And at the same time, we offer our services around financial advisory, where we get free uh, medical help when uh, someone is suffering from cancer. There are various government schemes around it. And uh, that, that's what we call Cancerpedia because Cancerpedia is all about information uh, to support uh, families from cancer around hospitals, uh, specialties which, uh, with government support and uh, anything that can help in terms of uh, medical treatment and uh, we provide that information. And peer-to-peer -peer support, uh, that's something uh, we all uh, know that uh, when we are in a social network uh, dedicated for cancer patients, uh, that's a very natural way of sharing one's pain and experience, which can uh, benefit the other cancer patients. So we are on our way there and we made quite considerable progress. We have some members already in our social network, but I uh, request all of you, the participants to spread the word and uh, welcome you to join, like our webpage. Um, if you can take to the next slide, actually. Uh, so we have uh, all the, uh, at the same time now, a vibrant uh, Facebook presence. We have the Companion Foundation uh, webpage, uh, or rather Facebook page. We have our own webpage uh, that's on Companion Online uh, that gives you a lot of information. And of course, on companion.org, which is a mobile app, if you go to Google Play, that there you can uh, just type on Companion and get your uh, download the app and participate in the scientific dissemination of knowledges with uh, cancer uh, soft, uh, patients or their family members. And I look forward to all your learned uh, uh, so-called knowledge sharing and, and, of course, networking to bring more and more people who are associated with cancer into this forum, uh, maybe patients or maybe uh, uh, knowledge uh, knowledge dissemination and then supporting this cause so uh, that's what i'm looking forward uh, i i firmly believe that we will succeed and with all your support I, i'm looking forward to many such webinars in future uh, please uh, do follow us in in facebook do join on companion uh, uh, social network uh, through the uh, through the app that i mentioned and um, I will close to this session by again thanking Arthur for this wonderful coordination work. And of course, Dr. Raj Hotri once again uh, for his time from his busy, busy schedule to make this happen. And not, not for least, but not last but not least, all the participants who have taken some family time off to join this webinar and making it such an interactive session. Have a nice evening. With this, I'll uh, hand it over to Arthur yeah, I would just echo Devashish's word. Thank you everyone for taking time off participating in this webinar. We hope that it, it has got some kind of impact somewhere I mean, in, in the longer term, not through this webinar to be specific. And uh, with that, I would like to thank cordially thank uh, my sir, Dr. Shushantar Roy Chaudhary for taking time out and actually delivering such a concise uh, talk in a, such a short period of time. And I hope we will do better in terms of Im improving the content and also the time, duration, interactiveness of the webinar in our following series. So I look forward to all your participations in, 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 in next sessions. Thank you all. Thank you.